Well, this is my haunted rocking chair that I've had for about three years now and it's never really quite worked the way I wanted it to. So here it is in May and I'm going to try to get this working correctly. One of the things about home haunting is uh, when you do things for the first time you tend to learn a lot just by making mistakes and that's where I'm at now. So I'm going to troubleshoot this and get it working the right way. So one of the things that I did incorrectly with this prop is that I had a small bracket that connected to the back of the chair here, which I made a little bracket for that bracket to connect to. And that was connected to this linkage, which I got last year. The year before I just had a straight bar connected to this and I couldn't quite get it to work correctly. So I thought maybe this linkage would give me a little play that I needed. But the problem I was having is that this wiper motor kept pulling the chair back because the chair is so small. It's a little child's chair, not like most props I've seen people use. They use a large rocking chair. So you have to take something like that into account. So after doing a little um, tinkering and figuring out what was going on, I, I figured the best way to do this is just with a simple lever like this and I think it's important that the linkage joints actually be above where the axis of the motor is. That's going to make a huge difference in controlling where this linkage goes so it doesn't lock out on you and it, does, and it will prevent the rocking chair from coming back. So the first thing you need to do is you need to determine how much throw your linkage has. So in this case, I'm just gonna, I'm, I have a ruler here and I'm just looking at basically how much throw there is and there looks to be about, about between three and a quarter and three and a half inches of throw. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna slide it up and I'm going to see, and I have some blocks here to prevent my rocking chair from going beyond what I want the animation to do. So if I pull the rocking chair back, it'll hit this block of wood here. If I push it forward, it'll hit this block of wood up here. So that's kind of how I want the animation to be. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this rocking chair back and forth and I'm just looking at the top of this. This is just some uh, 16th inch, uh, one inch um, aluminum angle stock. And I'm looking at the throw here. And that's about two and a half inches. So that's too little. So if I go back here, and important to note, the further you go back with the lever, of course, the less force is needed to actually animate your prop. So if torque is an issue for you, depending on what kind of gear motor you're using, that's something else to consider. So I'm going to go back here and look at the throw back here. Again, just using my blocks as a guide on the animation. And I can already tell that that's going to be way too much. So I'm going to go back over here and yeah, I kind of set this up beforehand, but so that's about six and a half inches to nine and a half inches. That's about three inches of throw. So that's my sweet spot. I know that that is where I want to link this linkage bar up to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this angle stock right about here. I'll make a mark and then I will cut a hole right here, connect this and we'll set it up. I've just secured this angle stock with a couple of clamps. That way you don't have to use any fasteners and waste a bunch of material. You can just kind of tinker without actually drilling or doing anything final until you've got the mechanism worked out. Okay, as you can see, I've sanded the edges smooth. 
I've got my marks laid out and I'm going to drill my holes using a step bit on the drill press. I am going to want to sand the inside of this right here just because that's where the washers, the flat washers are going to be and I want that metal to rub up against there. So I'll just use a little file. Okay, now what I want to do is remove my old bracket. So I don't want to move my motor because of the way it's mounted. I'd have to actually remove it from the bracket to move it, and so it's kind of a pain. So I'm pretty set on the motor's position. Instead, what I'll do is I'll just make some adjustments here, ensure that I have this bracket exactly where I want it. I'll use a spring clamp to hold it in place, and then just flip the chair over. And I can attach it with some screws. All right, let me put this back together and we'll have the moment of truth. So you just put one washer on here. Put it through the hole. The other washer in on the other side, and there's a flange locking nut that goes on the bolt. Sometimes simplicity is the most sophisticated thing. I've made a lot of props that are more complicated than this and this seemed to just get the best of me for the last three years but that looks like it's gonna work just fine probably do some more testing just make sure it doesn't uh, the chair doesn't reposition or creep back or anything like that if that happens then uh, I might elevate the chair just slightly and install a couple of bolts onto a, a clevis pen or something so that it can rotate and not move so that's actually working pretty good. It's most quiet when it's actually at full speed. What I'll do is I'll mask off the chair and spray paint this flat black so you can't see it at night or in the haunted house. And I will show you some close-ups of actually how it's all hooked up and then we'll start working on the doll next. first saw this doll at a spirit Halloween store I had the idea to do a haunted child's rocking chair and I just kind of envisioned these glowing eyes so naturally I'm just now getting around to it three years later uh, I do or I did pull out the batteries because I'm not a fan of batteries I store all my Halloween stuff in a storage container it's not exposed to the elements, but it doesn't ha it's not climate controlled and it gets really hot here. So I hooked this up to a three volt wall wart and I'm trying to decide what I wanna do as far as the eyes. Do I wanna make my own LED eyes and put a resistor in and just use this power for it? Or do I want it to only come on during when the peekaboo uh, wiper motor controller comes on. So that's something that I'm considering. So this is the PicoVolt. It's a DC motor and light controller. 
So your power plugs into there, then you have your trigger inputs and your motor or light input. And the P is for the uh, parking wire on the wiper motor, so it goes back to the same position. And then the negative and the, the positive terminal. So this puts out 12 volts and you can record the animation. What's cool about this is it's got one minute of animation and you can actually control the speed of the, the motor which will also control the intensity of your LED lights. And when you're recording it actually does record your change in voltage which is really cool. So my thought was I would use 12 volt LEDs just to have that protection in case I did go all the way up full speed because I believe that's when the wiper motor was running the smoothest. And the idea would be that her eyes would come on somewhat when the, when the prop first started up, but as I increase the speed, maybe as she's getting angry, she's got a, a few different things that she says. I'll turn her on in a second. But when the motor speeds up, her eyes would get bright um, congruently or in proportion, I guess I should say. So I thought that would be kind of cool. So let me, let me hook this sound up real quick and you can listen to what she actually says. Now I had disconnected my wall wart when I took everything apart when it wasn't working. So I've just hooked it up to a DC power supply. to three volts here. And right now it's set to try me, which is the button right here. There's a, an off feature and then a sensor feature. And the sensor feature in a busy haunted house, the thing is just gonna be going off all the time. And I really wanted her only to come on when the motor came on. So everything kind of came on at once. Her eyes would light up the rocking would start and she would start talking. So I think what I'm gonna do is either just leave it on sensor and directly tie this into the PicoVolt somehow, or I could actually put it on Try Me and then this is just a momentary switch is what it is and I can just wire um, up a terminal in here and then run the wire to something that would switch um, via the rocking chair itself. So I'll have to figure that out. But this is what she says. So it'd be cool if the rocking chair was like speeding up when she says that made me angry. So this is what I decided on. I decided to go with these uh, just blue LED lighted um, little spots, tiny spots. And this is something I just picked up at the automotive shop. This is 11 bucks and then these are really common. You can buy these online for monster eyes, but I'll put these inside. Obviously those are way too big, but I'll put them inside. They don't actually quite fit here, so I'll have to just cut a small portion of it out, glue the LED in somehow with some hot glue or something, and then that will be the way it lights up. I think 12 volts is the way to go. That way it can dim and uh, get brighter with the speed of the rocking chair. So I just hooked these up to my Protec DC power supply. So you can see, it's kind of bright in here, let me turn these off. So that's at 12 volts and they do dim down as the voltage goes down. So it would be kind of cool to see it kind of pulsing on and off with the motor. And I guess this is what it would kind of look like lit up the eyes here. I might leave that on and off switch in place, I think, to make things easier. Okay, so I figured out how I'm going to cut these. 
These are actually a lot thicker than they, they appear to be. I'm just going to throw it in a little vise here. And I'll just use a brad point drill bit to drill a hole through and through. And I'm just going to use a pen and then kind of draw about how much I need to cut. I just did the first one and it was almost too big so I just want to make sure it's small enough to where it will fit through that hole. I didn't want to... I don't know how brittle that plastic is on the doll's head. I don't want to risk damaging it. So then, just take a screwdriver so I can hold this securely. And this is my little Harbor Freight mini cutoff saw. It's great for little hobbies and stuff like this. So I found that when I placed a dollop of hot glue on the inside, I, I wanted to make sure the LED was on because hot glue can sometimes get air bubbles and it could look really weird, but we wanted a nice clean light there. So I just kind of had to move it around to, to force that air bubble out. So this one is dry. I'm just getting ready to do the second one. Then what I'm going to do is pop a little dollop of hot glue. Just watch your viscosity and make sure it's not too thin right into the center of the eye. And then I'm going to take a long screw and put this right where that the pupil would be. This is going to do two things. One, it's going to make sure I can tell where the pupil is so that they're placed correctly on the doll. And then the other thing is it's going to help. It's going to be a handle for me to um, maneuver the eye around and adjust it accordingly. Uh, what I was thinking I would do is um, trace around the inside of the doll's eyes and then push the uh, eyeball back into the, the skull and I can rotate it as I apply a little hot glue to where it needs to go and then I'll use the screw as a handle to pull the eye up into the glue and hold it while it dries. I'll take one of the eyes and drop it in. So I'm just going to put a little witness mark on the screw head that lets me know that little black dot will let me know that that is supposed to be up. Alright, once that dries a little bit, I'll be able to just let it go. And then you want to let the glue uh, harden completely and cool completely be before you try to snap these off. And I see some little gaps and stuff, there's just no getting around that. So what I may end up doing is, once this is dry, is get the, the glue gun really, really hot and then just do a very thin layer uh, around the whole eye. That way it looks uniform. I might even go back and airbrush the eyes later on. Maybe like uh, just kind of a, a white or a frost color just to make sure it looks uniform. We'll see how it looks. Okay, so I'm going to pop this off. So on one of the eyes I actually filled it in with the hot glue just did a light coating of the whole thing just because there were some gaps and stuff in here. And I can't really see the difference in the dark, so I'm going to go ahead and do the other one. I may come back and airbrush a little bit around the eyes, but I think it looks fine. Okay, I've decided to get the doll's sound to go off. 
that I'm going to use the try me button <clears throat> but obviously we need to make our own momentary switch so I've soldered two ring terminals on a couple of wires here and I'm going to take a 9 volt battery holder you can buy these at Radio Shack I'll connect one wire to this battery holder and screw it into the bottom of the rocking chair and then the other one to just this simple metal bracket. As the rocking chair comes down it will just touch the metal bracket and it'll close the loop and that'll set the sound off. So now I just have to take apart the box to get at the inside of that try me button. Okay, so this is what the inside of the box looks like, and here are two white wires coming from the try me button. This is just a momentary switch. So let me hook this up to power and we'll test the doll's function because I don't know how often the rocking chair is going to cycle, so if this momentary switch hits while she's talking, I want to make sure that it doesn't reset or do anything like that. So I'm hitting, I'm hitting the button right now and it doesn't reset the sound or anything so that means we're in good shape. If the contact hits the other contact to close the loop while she's talking it's not going to do anything to the sound so I think that's going to work perfect. So now I'm just going to snip these two white wires that are coming from the try me button and connect them to the two wires that go to my separate ring terminals. Just going to put a little heat shrink tubing to protect the exposed wire. And I always do this to be on the safe side, so I'm going to fold each one of them over. And then connect just a larger or put on just a larger heat shrink. Just for added protection. So the only thing that's going to be hanging this wire onto this is the uh, these tiny little white wires and they're so flimsy I'm afraid if this cord accidentally gets pulled on too hard that it's just going to rip these wires out so what I think I'm going to do is just place a glob of hot glue on the inside here and then just hot glue the black wire so that's nice and strong. Okay so the glue's dry but I want to double check something I want to make sure, just in case a piece of solder is sticking out or something, I've had this happen before where you put everything back together and then it doesn't work the way you expect it to. So here are my two ring terminals. I'm just going to take a continuity tester and connect that to one side. If you don't have one of these, I recommend it. If you're a hobbyist like me, you'll use this thing all the time. So I'm just going to touch the other ring terminal and notice there's no light. So that's good, and it is working. So, perfect. Now just button this back up and put it back inside the doll. All right, snip that off. up there. Alright, ready for the final install.